Hello there and welcome to the video. I'm going to share with you uh, a miniature game I played a good while ago. It was in 2005 in Gibraltar at the uh, Gibraltar Open. And I would like to, well, this game features a trap in the uh, Nimso Larsen 1p3, the Nimso Larsen attack. And uh, yeah, I'll, I will show you, you know, show you your way around this trap. Uh, I'll tell you, you know, how I came across it and how I have even expanded on it. So if you play b3 or even other moves, I will show you, then you might be able to uh, apply this trap. So um, the story was, uh, I had an opponent here in Iceland that actually a few opponents and you'd come across those on the internet as well that wanted to play the Dutch defense with black. So after d4, they would love to go f5, but they didn't like many of the lines that white has. You know, there's a Staten gambit, uh, white might play some weird gambits with g4, he might play bishop g5, some early knight c3. So many people that want to play the classical Dutch uh, and the stuff that uh, Sam Williams recommends, for example, they would start with e6. And only after c4, they play f5. And they do this because they are comfortable if white were to play e4, because they play the French defense. So Simon uh, has done this in the past, and some of my friends did this as well. You know, played e6 against everything. Even against c4, e6, if d4, f5 etc. So at some stage uh, I found a funky line in a book. It might have been even Simon's book where he mentioned this option for white and uh, black needed to be tricky. So when I prepared for this opponent, and this was at the Gibraltar Chess Festival, my opponent was Henry Duncanson, rated 2110, and I noticed that he played e6 f5 against d4. So I thought, well, let's see if he does that. And I played the move on b3. He played e6, bishop b2, and so far everything looks innocent. And here black is hoping that eventually after f5, you know, white will play some normal moves, but at the end of the day, something like c4, d4, and we will have a dodge. And the position looks innocent enough, but believe it or not, Black is actually in trouble after, after White's next move. And once you know it, 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 it's a powerful move, it should be easy to see, but the move pawn to e4 puts Black in a bit of a pickle. Now in the game, my opponent went knight to f6. But let's have a look at uh, what Black can do. Actually, there's not much. If he takes the pawn, he will find himself in a world of her queen h5 check. This is especially strong. Black has to play king to e7. Very ugly. So his development will be severely stunted. And white will just develop, you know, something like knight c3. He will, he will long castle and play d3, something like this. We're down upon, but we have a, a massive attack. The knight, the knight is coming in. The bishop is strong. You know, open files for the rooks. We can even, you know, throw in some pawns. And black is lagging in development and uh, pretty bad position. But why does he have to play king e7? Well, that's the key point. If black plays g6 to block the jack, we have this nasty move, queen e5, setting up this battery on the diagonal, which means that black can't interpose anything and the rook will simply be lost. So very, very cunning and effective trap. So black can't take it. So what are the options? My opponent played uh, knight f6, like I said. Um, other moves don't impress, something like queen e7. Okay, the queen doesn't stand very well. We'll, we'll just develop again. And, you know, looks like Kind of a bad Latvian gambit or something for black. And you know, white will 
Yeah, this is some, just some random sample line that I analyzed with the computer so a while ago and you know just a big as to white. Um, D6 is something I looked at. Same thing, we can give this check. It's, it's very annoying. And if G6, now we pull back and have another check here. And the rook drops. So he'd, he'd have to move the king. So you see, trying to find good moves is actually not so easy. So I guess the same thing with D5. I'm just thinking of, thinking of this now. I guess we just take it. We give this check. And you have to move the king because if this check and this drops. So you can't move the depot. Funky moves like queen h4. We just develop. And we're going to develop the tempo all over the place. Probably castle queen side. This looks good. And again, you can't play g6 because of the bishop. So not a lot of options, and in the end, my opponent went with knight to f6. I took an f5. It's also interesting to play e5, but I, I kind of like what happens after e takes f5. I think that's kind of part of the trap, but note that e5 is also very strong. With e5, the knight kind of doesn't have a good square. You have to play kind of a funky ally kind, I guess. Pull the, pull the bishop, uh, sorry, the, the knight back here, and white looks like he has a very good position. But I took an f5. And that's sort of one of the main points of this line after queen e2, is that black can't really interpose anything on e7. Because if it does, we take on f6, and this structure is simply horrible for black. He has double pawns. Uh, we'll just ex you know exchange queens, play this position, play for a blockade on f4. We'll, we'll get an knight on f4. We, you know we can put this one here. After we trade queens, we can put the other one here. Uh, get a blockade on f4, and then we have a light squared bishop, and we can uh, attack this weakness and eventually probably win it. So a very difficult structure, which explains why my opponent went with king to f7 which at the time was a novelty. I played knight to f3, pieces out. I played g6, pieces out. And here he's playing, trying to get d5 in. But he didn't play d5. Um, probably should have, but nonetheless, it looks like white is definitely for choice. You know, I have jacks if I want to. Uh, on e5, g5, I can, I can increase the pressure with, with Harry, the ace pawn. And this guy looks like it's going to be uh, effective for a while. So we played a strange move, knight a6. And I went on with the attack here, h4. Queen e7, and I gave him this check on g5. And here my opponent kind of uh, walked into it. He could have played king g8. Computer still has a massive advantage to white, but... King g7 simply walks into, uh, yeah, pretty decent tactic. Uh, maybe you can try to find it here. What to do? Knight c2 e4. Very well done indeed. If you found that, we're just utilizing the pin on the king here. This piece is, is pinned. So we can simply reload the knight on e4. Uh, reminds me a little bit of the Timon fork, where. Uh, a knight is sacrificed, but another knight reappears and the threat is renewed. So I gain a pawn, a pawn on, on f5, but I'm going to get a lot more. So king f7, we take, moves the queen with jack, but I, I just pull back. Still attacking the queen and still attacking the rook. Queen a5. And black, of course, is completely lost here, and I moved in for the kill. I went knight to g5. He doesn't have a lot of choices, he went with king g8. Queen f3, uh, threatening mate here. Again, not much to do, he went with uh, queen to f5, and now queen c3. I really like this this last maneuver of, of queen f3, queen c3. Very effective way to finish the game, and turns out again that this long diagonal is black's undoing. Kind of fitting for the Nimson Lawson, where you open up for the bishop here, and in 17 moves, the battery decides the game. Now I said uh, I had expanded this trap and well it turns out that there do exist people that uh, might after b4 either play e6 first 
or f5 and you can play the same trap not that different take on, on b4 you take on b7 and g7 so f5 and we still have this move e4 now in this case okay they can take this slight diff no actually they can't because of this so slight difference this might be hanging in some lines but i don't think it, it's uh it's a factor again again if you take we have the check you have to go king e7 same thing if g6 this guy drops so it has to play king e7 and the only thing is that we, we don't have bishop a3 in some lines but other than that we can still you know just play play for uh, our lead in development and especially lines where they go knight f6 we can more or less apply the same things play queen e2 they play bishop b7 they have to take on this structure and then there's this check so probably they, they play queen e7 and and again we get this structure and maybe we trade off and we're pretty happy again going for this blockade and attacking this this weak pawn on f5 so same thing we just have to start by uh, protecting the pawn, or maybe playing b5. I think we'd prefer to have uh, a pawn on a dark square if we can keep it, but it might be difficult. So there you have it, uh, a trap you can use in the, in the Nimsa Larsen, and also sometimes in the Orangutan or uh, the Sokolsky opening, one to, b4, one to b4, I actually had it a bunch of times, and it's always you know, satisfying when the, uh, when the trap works. So the trap is, is let's, let's review it a little bit. Um, so we have people that play e6, f5 against everything, and we wait for them to do that, and then we play e4. And turns out that uh, the combination of the bishop on the long diagonal and, and the queen check is very dangerous in many lines. So like we just reviewed, this meets with this, g6, queen e5, picking this up, the king has to come up and white develops. Uh, moving on d-pawn is bad, d6 or d5 we can take, we can give the check, and in this case if, if, if you block it we go back, so again you'd have to move the king. So most people will go here, but then they have to watch out for these double pawns, there's also maybe e5 like I mentioned, strong move, but I like the, this structure with, with the double pawns, and I would take, they can't take back with the queen, and these isolated double pawns are, are pretty bad. So that's basically it. I mean, other moves I've rarely seen played. Almost everybody has played f takes e4 or knight f6 against me. So if you play b3 or b4 on the first move, uh, I think your chances of success are pretty high. So, yeah, hope you enjoyed it and uh, see you soon. Thank you. Bye bye.